was found dead. That's right. And it goes on. The man who launched the entire phone hacking scandal had become paranoid. Oh, see, he's paranoid. It's like looking both ways at a four-way stop. That's not paranoia. That's common sense. A paranoid recluse who believes someone was out to get him, a friend has revealed. Sean Hoare, who was found dead in his flat in Watford yesterday, had spent much of the last week of his life hiding in his flat with the curtains drawn. Told folks they're coming to get me, just like Diana said. Prince Charles told me he's going to kill me in a fake auto accident. Favorite way of Western intelligence to kill you. Well, they have the movie Syriana based on Bob Bear. He's, he's telling the guy who wants you to kill him. He goes, I want you to drug him, put him in a car, and run a truck into it. That's a true story. I want you to drug him, put him in a car, run a truck into him. She told the butler that. She shot a video. Scotland Yard confiscated it, but they didn't get her diary. It's in her diary. What did Hutton say? What did the Hutton inquiry say about Dr. David Kelly, the head weapons inspector, who said it's all a lie about WMDs? He sent an email to friends and colleagues saying, I've been told I'll be found dead in the woods. They murdered him. Better than a hammer, found dead in the woods. Slit wrist, no blood at the scene. We're going to come back with this. Now, who murdered this guy? We'll be right back. Okay, so... We found this guy's now been dead since yesterday morning in England. And within 20 minutes of them announcing they found the dead body, the police walked out to the press cordon and said, we don't think there's any foul play. Okay, a guy is telling his neighbors and everybody that they're out to get him. He's scared for his life. He's the person that blew the whistle and said, no, this goes directly to the head of News of the World, who himself openly works for David Cameron. Okay. Now, he's dead, and the police out of the gate say, uh, we don't think that there's anything suspicious about this. How asinine is that? And, of course, the police, you have the police chief of, of London, incredibly powerful position, the commissioner resigning. You have the head of Scotland Yard uh, resigning, one of the oldest law enforcement agencies in the world. You have all this going on, and a guy at the center of it's dead, and the police say, nothing to see here, move along. And there's articles out calling people conspiracy theorists today in the news if you think this is suspicious. There's news saying it's suspicious and that you're a conspiracy theorist if you think the big pharma head's girlfriend being found bound and gagged hanging from the front balcony four days after the son fell down the stairs and died later. Two people die at a house in a week. And the police say, no foul play. Hanging from a rope, bound and gagged. And I've seen it in Austin. This Palestinian activist professor, gutted, wrist slit, bound with duct tape, mouth, hands, legs, thrown into the water, into the Colorado River, in downtown Austin. And the police said, oh, yeah, he bound himself and did all this and threw himself in. That's who runs America. That's who runs America. We need to stop being little children. This is who runs England. Stop being naive about government. The man who launched the entire phone hacking scandal has become a paranoid recluse. See, he was paranoid. He's dead now. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's evil. Who believes someone was out to get him. He's dead now. But he's, you know, a friend has revealed Sean Hoare, who was found dead at his flat in Watford yesterday, had spent much of the last week of his life hiding in his flat with the curtains drawn. Last night, a friend and neighbor claimed Matt Hoare, 47, had become increasingly reclusive and paranoid in recent weeks. He would talk about someone from the government coming to get him. He'd say to me, if anyone comes by, don't say I'm in. He was physically going downhill. He was yellow in color and wasn't looking well for the last month. He had a constant struggle with alcohol and talked to me about how much he had put his wife through. He did say something about phone hacking, and I think that was his main worry. Yeah, no kidding. He was had definite concerns with the media. He did mention he was paranoid and would mention conspiracy stuff. See, conspiracy. He's at the center of something that is very probably going to bring down the prime minister of the United Kingdom. The two head police chiefs in the country have had to resign. They've arrested the head of News Corp. There's bribery scandals, intelligence ops, spying on parliament, all of this coming... 
David Cameron runs to South Africa. All of this is going on, and you are a conspiracy theorist if you are the guy that released all this info and is the key witness, the key witness, and you tell people they're out to get you and you die. Princess Diana said, Charles told me he's going to kill me in a fake auto accident in a video and in a diary. Scotland Yard raided. On record, got the video, not the diary. It got out. That diary's public and, is, and has been out for many years. Newspapers have reported on it. Charles told me he's going to kill me in a fake auto accident. That'd be like if I said, my wife told me that if I don't shape up, I'm going to be uh, uh, found uh, dead in the lake. And then I'm found dead in the lake. And there's a video and a diary. Oh, oh, they're not going to question my wife. I mean, this is incredible, ladies and gentlemen. Same thing with the Hutton inquiry. It came out that Dr. David Kelly had weapons inspectors, said there's no WMDs. He was going to testify. He told his friends, I'm going to end up dead in the woods, I've been told, but I don't care. I'm going to tell the truth. People walk up in the park at dawn, see five men in black uniforms, or was it four, run away from his body. This is on record. The police come and say, nothing to worry about. He slit his wrist, no blood at the scene. Then it was, oh, he took pills, two undigested pills. They murdered him. They murdered him, and he said they were going to murder him, but still the police say it's suicide. So there you go. Bunch of other key news coming up on the economy. Stay with us. Stay with us. Okay, my friends, we are going to be taking some of your phone calls. The toll-free number to join us on air is 1-800-259-9231. 259 I mentioned some of this yesterday. But I want to get into it in more uh, detail today, and that is uh, a lot of high-level intelligence sources in the U.S., Israel, and Europe are saying Israel is intending to strike Iran in September, and the repercussions of that are, are just unbelievable. I promise, because I didn't get to it in detail yesterday, I'm going to cover that in the third hour today. I am also going to get into the public admission of George Soros' media matters that they would infiltrate News Corps and destroy it from within. Now, that is rivaling the stuff going on with News Corps and its divisions um, that are unfolding and taking place over in England. But if you want to not wait to the third hour, you can go read the article at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. 15,000 U.S. troops will remain in Iraq, renamed diplomats. And then in this article, it gets into the reports that there is a plan to attack Iran in September. So... That is coming up. Now, again, the toll-free number to join us on air today is 800-259-9231, and we will get you up and on the air. We have uh, several guests joining us today. We have uh, Corbett from the Corbett Report popping in in the last 30 minutes to look more at the mysterious uh, death uh, of the key whistleblower at the heart of the hacking scandal and bribery scandal that threatens to bring down the British government. And he says, people are after me. I've got to hide out. I'm in danger. There's a government conspiracy dealing with the hacking. He's found dead. The cops within 20 minutes walk out and tell the media, no foul play. We don't think anything's going on before an investigation was even done. Go away. That's always the sign. Oh, we just found the Pulitzer Prize winner who wrote about the government drug dealing on a new book coming out in a few months. We just found him shot twice in the back of the head. In California, at his home, uh, he told folks people were breaking in his house and threatening him, but uh, uh, we believe it's normal to shoot yourself twice in the head. It'd be hard enough to be able to bring a hammer down on your on your fingers once, much less twice. Can you imagine trying to shoot yourself in the in the in the in the first the back of the head and, and then blew his jaw off in the side of the face with a shotgun? Can you imagine? I'm tough. I can shoot myself once with a shotgun, and I'm so tough with. That I then, I then I shoot myself in the face. 
That, that's how tough I am. Let me shoot myself in the back of the head here. Let me, and, then, and then let me shoot myself from the side and blow my whole jaw off. Because I'm tough. Yeah. Princess Diana, Dr. David Kelly. Now this poor whistleblower. They come out and they say, I've been told I'm going to get killed. Someone's coming to get me. There's a conspiracy over this whole hacking situation. Oh, gee, he's the key witness in everything. No one would think anything of him just suddenly dying. No, no. And they actually say, you know, in the articles, there's a whole bunch out today, don't be a conspiracy theorist, okay? You know, if uh, a kid falls down the stairs and dies, and four days later, the woman who was watching the child, the girlfriend is found hanging from a balcony, bound and gagged, hand and feet, dead. And the police, within minutes, come out and say, no foul play, move along. We're not, we don't think this is suspicious. That, that, that's normal. That's normal. Don't be a conspiracy theorist, okay? Governments never kill people. It's like that line in The Godfather 1 where uh, Al Pacino uh, character is talking to his girlfriend. And she says, come on, Michael. That's ridiculous. Presidents and senators don't have people killed. And he says, oh, who's being naive now, Kate? Oh, come on, Michael. Come on, Michael, because you know, she knows he's been involved in killing people to protect his dad. And she says, Michael, it's terrible that they're killing people. It's horrible. And he says, Kate, that's how things are done. That's how presidents and senators operate. And she says, Michael, presidents and senators don't do things like that. And he says, who's being naive now, Kate? Stop being naive. They're going to kill me. I'm hiding out in my house. I'm the main witness bringing the whole government down. Dead. <laughs> Please come out. Okay, news media. Nothing Nothing to see here. No foul play. Move along. <laughs> yeah. You know, back in the uh, early 90s, it was a joke when you'd get Arkansas with your arms, legs, head cut off, and they'd say it was a suicide. Or shot off the road, you know, hundreds of bullets in the car. Wow, they just came in here with another insane headline. This is up on uh, Infowars.com. Arkansas town seeks to ban free speech, formation of groups. I remember hearing about this a few days ago and couldn't confirm it, but here it is, local Fox 16. We're going to play that coming up later. Mayor Ernest Nash commented, this is America, even though this is uh, gold Arkansas. It's still part of America, and in America, you can't just vote to take away somebody's constitutional rights. Well, why not? They do it out in Courtsville, Courtsite, uh, Arizona. Yeah, you know, I told you about Arkansas when we're talking about Courtsite in Arizona. I've seen a lot of newscasts where they go, we have daytime curfews in this city, and we and it show people driving out of their neighborhoods having their IDs checked, and they said, martial law is in effect. The city council voted for it. Why not vote? Then you can be put into work brigades for the city council. Well, that's all under federal executive orders, and the threat fusion centers are teaching the cops how. G-O-U-L-D, I guess that's Gould, Gold. Arkansas is a small town of 850 people. In the uh, city council has its ways. Those 850 people will be barred from gathering together to discuss city matters without approval from the city government. Well, why not? Bill Clinton started it, Bush expanded it, and Obama cemented it. That you want to demonstrate against him, you got to get a permit. And of course, they deny him most of the time. And then you're off at a free speech zone miles away where nobody can see you. And then a lot of times the riot police just show up and go ahead and rubber bullet you for good measure. And if, and, and if they don't have an excuse, they openly hire thugs that work for them to turn a trash can over. The cops then wave them off. They've been caught all over the world doing it. Canada, U.S., England, Switzerland, um, Italy, Greece. And then they rubber bullet the crowd with women with baby strollers. Now, this is how tyranny's done. Mayor Ernest Nash is completely opposed to the plan and is willing to go to court rather than see the ordinance pass. This is still America. You can't vote and violate people's constitutional rights, he said. Last Monday, the city voted to ban groups from gathering or forming without city approval. Ha <laughs> ha, boy, that's freedom. That's, that's, that's red coat behavior. That's North Korea. Sanja Farley, a member of the uh, city council, said that no... Matter the group, if anyone meets to discuss the city, the meeting must be approved by the city. You don't meet to talk about what the city's doing. 
Boy, he better believe they don't want folks getting organized and getting them out of there. We got to get somebody on about this.